Here are 10 Twisted Serial Killers from Canada. Viewer discretion is advised. And before you start watching this, please subscribe. It really makes a difference. Number 10, Nurse Wetlaufer. Elizabeth Wetlaufer is a convicted serial killer who confessed to eight murders and another six attempted murders. But what's so special about Elizabeth? Is it the fact she's the only woman on this list? Is it the fact that all of her victims were senior citizens between the ages of 79 and 96? No, it's the fact that she was their nurse. The very person sworn to protect these elderly victims was the one secretly killing them as they lay. Her weapon of choice? A lethal dose of insulin. After her arrest, she admitted crimes and said God or the devil wanted her to do it. Saddest of all, she had confessed her killing spree to friends, a lawyer, and her preacher, but nobody believed her. She's now serving eight concurrent life sentences, and for what it's worth, the College of Nurses revoked her license. Good on you guys. Number 9. Eve Trudeau if for no other reason, Eve Trudeau makes this list through sheer numbers. Between 73 and 1985, Eve was a member of the Hells Angels biker gang and fulfilled a very special role. He was the guy who made people disappear. As an assassin for the gang, Eve has admitted to killing not 10, 20, 30, but 43 different people. Yet authorities have described him as a psychopathic killer with no conscience and a habit of getting coked up before killing. Then Eves decided to flip. He became a government informant and ratted out his Hells Angel Club. He was given a new identity, but he went back to prison for sexually assaulting a young boy. And then in 2008, he died of bone cancer. Number 8. Bruce MacArthur Bruce MacArthur is an accused serial killer who allegedly targeted men in Toronto's gay village and is currently facing at least seven charges of murder, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Although Bruce is in his 50s, authorities believe he may have been killing since his 20s and are looking at a 15 additional cold cases. Things fell apart for MacArthur when he sold a van to an auto parts store with traces of blood on the floor. Based on that evidence, police were able to connect him with a pair of cold cases from the gay village and the first murder charges were laid against him. Then they started looking around his world. It turns out he was a self-employed landscaper with hundreds of clients across the city. They started looking at garden planters that he used and found the remains of three more men buried right under the noses of his clients. Police are currently conducting a search of 75 different homes to see if he spread any other body parts across the Canadian city. Number 7. Gilbert Paul Jordan He was a barber who was also a raging alcoholic, drinking three bottles of vodka a day. He was also a sex addict, picking up prostitutes from the slums of Vancouver 200 times a year. His criminal career kicked off in 52, with convictions for rape, abduction, and car theft, to name a few. But he will go down in history as the boozing barber for killing 8 to 10 women between 65 and 87. He would target sex workers, bring them back to his place for a drink, and then pay them extra to drink straight liquor. Once they passed out, he would force alcohol down their throats and rape them as they died. Although he was connected to 10 murders, authorities only charged him with seven counts, and he was only convicted on one count of manslaughter. Jordan was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but he died behind bars after serving only six. Number 6. Michael Wayne McGray Has been convicted for killing 7 people but claims to have killed at least 11 more between 84 and 98. McGray was arrested in 98 on a tip from an informant. A mother and daughter were found with their throat slashed. McGray was ultimately convicted and sentenced to life in prison. But then, McGray reached out to police and offered to help them solve a series of unsolved murders right across Canada and the US in exchange for immunity. Police didn't give him immunity, but McGray began to sing anyway, revealing a trail of dead bodies in Halifax, Montreal, Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, and Seattle. McGray also promised to continue to kill, even behind bars. His roommate Jeremy Phillips literally begged for a transfer, but his pleas fell upon deaf ears. Phillips was found strangled to death, his body beaten to a pulp, and a sock was shoved down his throat. And guess what? They moved McGray back to maximum security, solitary confinement. Number 5. Bernando Paul Bernando was the perfect child. He was kind, polite, a good student, and a boy scout. But the perfect exterior masked a dark mind that fantasized about hurting women. As a young man, he would beat the women he dated and eventually became a serial rapist, targeting nearly 20 young girls in the Toronto area. In 1987, he met his first wife, Carla Homalka, 
who encouraged his violent fantasies. In fact, to please Paul's thirst for rape, she drugged her 14-year-old sister Tammy and presented her as a gift. Together, they raped and tortured her to death. This murder was a first for the couple, but sadly, it was just the beginning. Together, they would kidnap, torture, rape, and murder two more young women before cutting up their bodies and disposing of them. Perhaps at the sickest of all, they videotaped all of these encounters and watched them again for kicks. Canada folks, these folks are sick. Number 4. The Colonel Colonel Russell Williams was a rising star in the Canadian military. He was decorated Air Force pilot and commanded Canada's largest military airbase. But at the age of 44, something snapped. He began his first crime spree in 2007. He would break into the homes of the small towns near the airbase. He would dress up in lingerie and photograph himself and masturbate just another day at the office. It's unusual for someone to begin such delinquent behavior so late in life, and even worse was the sick escalation of his crimes. Just two years later, he graduated into a more dangerous game. He would now confine, beat, and sexually assault women. Two of these attacks resulted in murder, including one of his subordinates. All told, he was connected to two murders, but fortunately he kept all of his stolen panties, photos, and videos of his rapes neatly cataloged, so he's serving a life sentence. Number 3. Alan Legere Legere is a Canadian serial killer who is known as the Monster of Miramichi the region he terrorized in the late 80s. He committed his first murder in 1986 when he broke into an elderly couple's store and beat the husband to death and sexually assaulted his traumatized wife, leaving her to die. Remarkably, she was able to call 911 and the police eventually convicted Legere for murder. Three years later, he was transferred from prison to a regional hospital for an ear infection. He was able to use the washroom alone where he picked his handcuff using a homemade key he had smuggled and escaped the property in a stolen vehicle. For the next seven months, Legere would kill and rape at least five more people, including a pair of sisters and a Catholic priest. According to investigators, he would spend hours torturing his victims before finally killing them. It got so bad that Miramichi canceled Halloween that year. He's now serving life in a supermax prison. Number 2. Cliff Olson Cliff Olson was born in Vancouver in 1940, and as a schoolboy, he was already a bully and a thief who tormented animals and picked fights at school. At 17, he went to jail for the first time for breaking and entering, and from there, he racked up an impressive 90 more convictions and attempted seven escapes from custody. For the next 25 years, he only spent four years outside of a prison. On May 15, 1981, Olson was married to a woman who had no idea he was such a monster. Just a few days later, he abducted and killed a 16-year-old girl. In June, he killed a 13-year-old girl. By July, he'd killed six more children as young as nine years old. His appetite for murder was so great, he took out ads in the church bulletin board looking to hire teens for a window washing job. Fortunately, authorities have apprehended him in August after trying to abduct two girls who surely would have been his next victims. He's been dubbed the Beast of British Columbia and in 2011 died of terminal cancer. Number 1. The Pig Farmer It's always the pig farmer, like Robert Picton. He would target prostitutes and drug addicts from the poorest areas of Vancouver. He would bring them back to his farm where he would torture and murder them. He carried out his work for years without raising suspicion with neighbors or the police. In 97, one of his victims was able to stab him and escape. She went to the police, but they dismissed her because she was a known drug addict in the community. So Picton was allowed to continue. Notoriously, he would dispose of their bodies by feeding them to his herd of pigs. He even ground some of the human remains and mixed it with pork, selling it to local businesses, friends, and even the police. He was arrested in 2002 when police searched his property for illegal weapons. What they found instead were the remains of 26 missing women. While in custody, Picton would confess to his cellmate, an undercover police officer, that he actually killed 49 women. Picton expressed regret at not being able to hit his milestone, the big 5-0. The next time you're traveling internationally or backpacking or staying in a hostel and you see that maple leaf, don't exactly breathe easy at night. These guys are cold, calculated killers. They seem super nice. They say A, they go to their job, they handle their life, and then they go home and they feed 20 women to the pigs on their farm. Hey guys, please subscribe. It could be your good deed for the day.